Whitney Young's influence went far beyond what people would consider to be the influence of a 1960s civil rights leader, uh, the leader of an organization like the National Urban League, because he influenced what Congress did. He influenced what the president did, what mayors did, because of his ideas. Whitney Young was the advocate of that part of the preamble of the Constitution which says that we 300 million people all rise together or we sink together. Civil rights which are God-given and constitutionally guaranteed are not negotiable in 1963. He really understood that the movement does not stop with the segregated walls coming down. He understood that you had to do something about poverty, you had to do something about education, you had to do something about health care. The Urban League came about as a kind of pragmatic way providing employment access for African Americans who were new migrants from the South. He transformed the Urban League movement into a civil rights organization as well as a community service organization. The value of an Urban League, therefore, is that you have an ongoing vehicle, an institution, for our responsible communication between responsible white and Negro citizens meeting together on a peer basis with mutual respect. He saw the civil rights movement and the various organizations and movement each having a very important and critical role to play. He had a way of using his sense of humor to highlight the little differences and have people laugh it off. He understood that even though this black nationalist and I'm a black Democrat or even a Republican, we're going to deal with the issues of black people. And we're going to fuss and fight, sure. But in the end, there are things we can agree upon, and those things we will do together. What we in the Urban League say about black power, that power comes to one not from being black or white, but it's the green of a dollar bill or the maroon of a textbook uh, or it is the ballot in the ballot box. The Urban League was certainly one of those places where corporate America felt most comfortable. What he did was bring onto the board white people of greater influence than had been on the board before, which meant more money for the League. It meant more influential people acting on behalf of the League everywhere. You had persons like Henry Ford from the Ford Motor Company and James Lennon from Time Life that had not contributed to the Urban League and other civil rights movement projects to get involved. What Uncle Whitney did was very clearly to say, segregation is wrong, we are not inferior. Not only are we not inferior, but because of the struggles that we've had to overcome, we have gotten certain strengths of character that America needs to learn from. My father was given the opportunity to have the ear of three presidents, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, who held him in the highest esteem, not out of obligation, not because of his charisma, but because he was able to bring forth thinking and policy recommendations that were rooted in morality, common sense, and intellect. Whitney Young's genius was he knew how to accomplish what other people were merely for. There's no single person today that come close to playing the role that Whitney played. I think that Whitney Young was a prophet. I think that he died precisely at a time when few people understood how brilliant his vision for racial transformation of American power was. I take it very seriously that I stand on his shoulders and the shoulders of many others in the movement. Many of the things that we have today as black Americans, we would not have but for Whitney Young. Well, the Urban League has got to be supported. We must understand the distinction between rhetoric and relevance, between charisma and character, between symbols and substance, between protests and programs. We've got to be serious. We've got to take care of business.